It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Most Great Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Dale Levin. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. You know, being a cowboy, you need lots of energy. That's why Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal I like for strength and energy. Just two minutes after you eat a big bowl full, that whole wheat energy starts going to work for you. Try Grape Nuts Flakes buckaroos. They're great. And now, just listen to the fix Pat Brady gets us all into tonight. Welcome autumn rains have been falling in Paradise Valley. Today they have stopped, and in the slanting rays of the late afternoon sun, there's a strange sight on a muddy country road ten miles from Mineral City. A large, rickety old farm wagon, tarpaulin covered, is sloshing slowly through the ruts. A single mule trots behind the wagon, and in the animal's accustomed place at the front is Nellie Bell. The wagon, she could not creep till you come along with your jeep. <laughs> Freddy, you kill me. You absolutely kill me. Oh, but I would not want to do that, Senor Brady. <laughs> oh, go on. Just call me Pat. Oh, this is so charming of you to pull my poor old wagon from the mud. George, my mule, she can go back to work now. <laughs> Give George a rest. Hey, how far down the road you going? Oh, three, four, five, six, seven miles. I stop at the rancher, Senor Porter. I deliver to him this load of banana squish. Banana squish? <laughs> you mean banana squash. Oh, the mud goes squish. The mud goes squash. Huh? Squish, squash. What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> Freddy, when we get this wagon where we want to go, why, why don't you come into Mineral City and have supper with me? Oh. I, I want you to meet my friends, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. <laughs> well, we have laughs. <laughs> Oh, where is that Pat? He was supposed to come on duty at 5 o'clock. Well, quit worrying, Dale. Pat may be late, but just the sheriff and me don't exactly constitute a rush. Oh, I didn't mean that. I can handle the customers, Roy. Miss Evans, if you had problems like I've got, you wouldn't be worried about a missing waiter. What's the trouble, Sheriff? Those aliens that are being smuggled in to do the harvesting? Yeah, they're turning up all over the county. And as fast as I let the immigration authorities know and they ship them back, there's a new batch sneaks in some way. Mm. Hello there, Sheriff. Uh, I'm Rogers. Porter. Uh, Hello. Hello. Porter. Miss Evans, could I have a cup of coffee, please? Why, certainly, Mr. Porter. So we were just talking about this darn labor smuggling racket, and I got to give you credit, Mr. Porter. We've never caught you hiring any of those fellas. Well, of course not. I have my principles. Here you are, Mr. Porter. Oh, uh, thank you, miss. I just wish I could figure out how they get here. By airplane, probably. We're too far from the border for them to get in any other way. Well, that makes sense, Roy, except that we check all the planes that land anywhere near here. Of course you do, Sheriff. But how about some of the remote places? That's right. There's some mighty rugged country within a few hours' ride of Paradise Valley. Now, look, if a plane landed a batch of aliens off in the woods someplace, they'd still have to bring them to civilization some way, and my men are on the watch out for that. I'm sure you're doing an efficient job, Sheriff. Roy? Dale? Hi! Hi, Pat. Hi. <laughs> Jim, sorry I'm late, but I got a feller here who's more fun than... Oh, hi, Sheriff. Mr. Porter. Uh, hello. Uh, well, this is a fine time for you to show up, Pat Brady. You were supposed to go on duty at 5 o'clock. Dale, when Freddy here gets to tell you some of his jokes, you'll forget I was ever supposed to be around the place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Folks, I want you to meet my friend Freddy. Uh, buenos dias, senoritas y senores. Or, like they say in the United States, 
What's cooking? <laughs> well, I tell you, ain't he a scream? Well. Oh, Senor Porter, what a surprise to find you here. I have left the wagon with the banana squish at your ranch. Now drop around sometime and I'll pay you. Oh, gracias. I must be going, Miss Evans. I prefer to drink my coffee in a place that doesn't cater to rattle. Well, how do you like that? What's eating him? Mr. Freddy, I'm terribly sorry. Won't you sit down? Oh, oh, don't mind him. Hey, Senor Porter, I do business with him long time now. He loves to tease me. Well, it's not my idea of a joke. Yeah. i got to be getting back to the office to check in the night deputy. Okay, sir. Bye, Bye. Bye. Oh, Bye. <laughs> now, Freddy, just uh, make yourself at home. Oh, gracias. And I'm sure, Freddy, you'll forgive Pat if he makes himself at home, too, and puts on an apron. Dale's been pretty rest around here, Pat. She's served three cups of coffee in the last hour. Well, you see, I was driving down that little muddy road up in the north end of the valley, and I found Freddy and his wagon and his mule mark down to the hub. Gee. So me and Nellie Bell pulled them out and took them where they wanted to go. Which was Porter's, huh? You are right, senor, with a load of banana squish. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful? Hey, uh, tell, tell him the one about your brother, Freddy. That's the one that got me. Oh, maybe your friends don't like such a sad story. Sad story? Get him. <laughs> Ask him to tell it, Dale. Well, sure. Go ahead, Freddy. Well, my poor brother, I feel so sad for him. He isn't here anymore. Y your brother isn't here anymore, hey? No, poor fellow. He was killed by a weasel. What? A big fellow like your brother killed by a little weasel? That's right. He was sleeping on the railroad track, and he did not hear the weasel. <laughs> oh, brother... <laughs> That's a sad story, all right. <laughs> well, sir, <laughs> Freddy's going to have dinner with us here, and then me and Nella Bell drive him back to Porter's Ranch so he can get his wagon. See? Si. And so Senor Porter can pay me for the squish. And you would not believe it, but my friend Senor Porter has invited me to spend the night. Yeah, he sure acted like it. <laughs> I haven't a thing to do tonight, so uh, if you don't mind, I think I'll ride back to Porter's Ranch with you and Pat. <laughs> Freddy, there's your wagon and your mule under the shed, just like we left them. Except that the wagon, she is empty. Muchas gracias, amigo Pat. And I'm very happy to have met you, Senor Rogers. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And I'm happy to have met your dog, too. Goodbye, Senor Bullet. <laughs> I go now to the ranch house of Senor Porter. Mañana I go home. Hasta la vista, senores. Hasta la vista. Hasta mañana and hasta banana squish. <laughs> so long, Freddy. Hope to see you again. Be seeing you, Freddy. <laughs> Wasn't he something, Roy? He was something, all right. <laughs> well, let's be getting back, hmm? Hey, wait a minute, Pat. Bullet's mighty interested in that wagon. Let's take a look at it ourselves. Roy, it's just in a wagon. Well, I've never seen Bullet so interested in a wagon that's just been hauling squash. In fact, he's never cared much for the stuff. Well, he's sure sniffing around. Hey, what's this pile of cloth in the wagon? Oh, that's the tarp that was over the squash. You know, Pat, this is the first time I ever saw a poor farmer use an expensive nylon parachute for a tarp. What? Sure. This is a regulation passenger parachute. And from the way Bullet's acting, I think there's been men in that wagon very recently. Did Freddy say where he came from? Oh, uh, well, no, he didn't. Well, just before you got to the cafe this evening, we were having a discussion about airplanes and where they could land near Paradise Valley without being seen. Roy, what's that got to do with poor old Freddy being stuck in the mud? Maybe nothing, and maybe a lot. Anyway, when Freddy starts out in the morning, I sort of think I'm going to be keeping an eye on him. Hey, hey, Roy, what was that? Duck behind this wagon, quick. Right. Down, Bullet. Hey, someone's shooting at us. You bet they are. We're <laughs> mighty lucky it's night. Oh, Roy, I hope it never gets to be daylight. Pat and Roy drive Freddy, whom Pat has befriended, to the huge estate of John Porter for the jolly farmer is to collect for a load of banana squash and pick up his wagon and mule. But Roy and Bullet notice several strange things about the wagon, and as Roy decides to follow it in the morning, they're cornered by an unseen rifleman. If we can draw one more shot, I think we can run to Nelly Bell safely. I'm going to try to crease that hand that holds a rifle barrel with a bullet of my own. Boy, that'd be mighty fancy shooting, Roy. It's pretty dark. I know it, but I've been watching the muzzle flashes, and I think I have the range. 
Ready to run now, Pat, and I'll get him to fire. Okay. Gee, I hope Nella Bell feels like starting. You ready, Bullet? Well, here goes in. Hey, you, here we are. Oh, my wrist. You did it, Roy. You got him. Get this thing started, Pat. Bullet's here with us. Now get going. Bill, Bill, they're getting away. You bet we're getting away. Roy Rogers, you and your hunches. Why can't Pat and I go along? Yeah. Nellie Bell could get us there much faster than Trigger. You got to admit that. Well, Trigger and I can stay off the road and out of sight a lot better than the three of us and Nellie Bell. Anyway, if I'm not back by nightfall, let the sheriff know. I called him this morning and told him what to do. Roy, why are you carrying a rifle in that saddle scabbard? I might have to do some long-range shooting like someone tried on us last night. Oh, come on, Trigger. Let's go, boy. You two keep your eyes open. Well... Let's get open for the breakfast rush, Dale. By golly, I don't know what Roy's up to. Well, Pat, if you tell me exactly what happened last night, maybe I'd have some idea. Well, Bullet got to sniffing around poor old Freddy's wagon, and Roy claimed that the tarpaulin was an old airplane parachute, and then someone made us dance to rifle music. Well, what in the world did Roy tell the sheriff? Well, I heard him phoning, but I was so doggone sleepy I didn't pay much attention. Well, would you look at that car. Mr. Porter and his chauffeur at this hour of the morning? Sure enough, that is Porter. Good morning, Miss Evans. Good morning, Brady. Good, Good morning, morning, Mr. Porter. I'm looking for Roy Rogers. I'm afraid I owe him an apology. Well, he was here, Mr. Porter, but he's gone now, and we don't expect him back today. Where did he go? Do you know? Well, he... No, uh... we don't have any idea, Mr. Porter. Uh, you were saying something about an apology, Mr. Porter. Uh, that wouldn't apply to me, too, would it? Oh, that's right, Brady. You were with Rogers last night when you drove that truck farmer back to pick up his wagon, weren't you? Yeah, I sure was. In fact, uh, we went in my car. Well, then I owe you the apology, too, Brady. My night watchman is pretty skittish. I understand he fired at someone, and it must have been you. Yeah, but there was no damage done to us, at any rate. Say, I, I, I like that Freddy fella. Did he get started back this morning all right? This morning? He started last night. I wouldn't let a fellow like that sleep in my barn. Well, we usually consider our neighbors our equals in Paradise Valley, Mr. Porter. Miss Evans, that's a lot of nonsense, and you know it. Well, Sam. Hi. Roy around? Hello, Sheriff. Well, no, he isn't. He left quite a while ago. Well, he got me out of bed at daybreak this morning and told me to have a posse ready to, to go either to Diamond Back Pass or Diamond Head Mesa. And I was so sleepy that darn if I got it straight. A posse? Uh, sure. Roy said he had a hunch about the border jumpers, and he said to have this posse ready. If he's looking for smuggled aliens, he must have meant Diamond Back Pass. Why, Diamond Head Mesa, how would anyone smuggle aliens up there? You're probably right. Yes, Mr. Porter, you're probably right. Not that it's any of my business. Well, I'll be running along. I hope I'll see Roger soon. I wish I hey, knew Dale. what... Shh, what why... Wait a minute. The ranch first, and then we're going to have to make a quick trip. All right, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Sheriff, you'd better get that posse organized and head for Diamond Head Mesa as quickly as you can. But I thought we decided it was Diamondback Pass. We decided nothing of the kind. We just said that. Please trust me, Sheriff. How long will it take to get started? Well, it's awful early in the morning. Can't get the men together in less than an hour. Well, all right, but hurry as much as you can. And remember, it's Diamond Head Mesa. All right, Miss Evans. I hope you know what you're doing. Oh, don't worry. She does. Uh, do you, Dale? Well, I think so. And if Nellie Bell can get us there, you and I are closing up right this minute. Diamond Head Mesa would be a perfect place for a plane to land and take off without being seen. And Mr. Porter was awfully anxious to have the posse go to Diamond Back Pass. Meanwhile, Roy and Trigger arrive at their destination. The deep timber stand from which Diamond Head Mesa juts out into space like a huge sloping platform. Hidden from sight... They watch a strange procession cross over a deep chasm by means of the wooden bridge, which is the only pathway to the mesa itself. First, Freddy and his mule-drawn wagon. Next, Dale and Pat in Nellie Bell. Then, Porter's powerful car, which pauses at the far side of the bridge while its driver gets out and works hurriedly near the wooden structure. As he finishes and the car continues, a large cargo plane comes in for a landing on the mesa, and Roy knows that he cannot wait for the posse. All right, Trigger. 
I couldn't make out what Porter was doing, but we've got to get up on that mesa. Come on, boy, go! <sighs> Trigger, what's the matter? Come on, let's go! Trigger, there's only one way onto that mesa, and that's over the bridge. Unless you want to jump that chasm, and I don't. Come on now, over it, boy! <sighs> Look, Trigger... We've seen a big wagon, Nellie Bell, and Porter's car cross this bridge. It'll hold you. All right, I'll lead you across. Hey, quit pulling back. All right, Trigger, we'll test the bridge. I'll toss this big rock onto it. If I can lift the thing. There now. Boy, Trigger, you sure had that one figured out. Porter set some sort of a contact bomb so the next person who tried to cross would be blown up the bridge. Well, he didn't get away with it. Thanks to you. Those planks can be fixed, but we can't wait that long. We've got to get on that mesa right now, and the only way to do it is jump that chasm. So come on, fella. Look, Freddy, your jokes are great. But this is no joke. Now take that gun out of my ribs. What makes you think I am kidding, Senor Pat? Why, of all a rotten... That's enough. Now, don't take that gun off them for an instant, Fred. Joe, you tie them up tight? Sure. Sure, Mr. Porter. Don't you ever learn to quit showing off, Fred? You should have known you'd get in trouble when you let Brady and his jeep pull that load of laborers right to the place. Oh, oh. easy with those ropes. By seeing your Porter at the wagon, she was stuck in the mud. I've heard the whole story. And you can drop that stupid accent. Drop the accent? Huh? This fool you think is so funny just loves to show off. Well, he can thank his lucky stars that I got here in time. Okay, Mr. Porter. Shall I take the men off the plane? No, we'll load my car and Brady's Jeep on it, take off again, and land at the alternate field. You've got this alien smuggling racket pretty well worked out, haven't you, Mr. Porter? You bet I have, and I'm not going to have it stopped. Hey, what was that? Maybe it's Roy. I mean... Oh, so Rogers was on his way up here, huh? We don't (laughs) know where Roy is. Well, I do. I set a contact bomb under the bridge so that the next person who tried to cross it would end up at the bottom of a 300-foot chasm. Oh, no! No, it wasn't Roy Dale. We've got to believe that. It wasn't Roy. I think it was. The sheriff's posse is going to Diamondback Pass. Hey, <laughs> Mr. Porter, you really figure all the angles. Are they tied good and tight, Joe? Tight as a two-dollar drum. All right, Fred, help me toss them in the wagon. You're a banana squash wagon. You're going to just leave them up here? Of course not. We're going to start the wagon down the incline toward the precipice. They're tied so they can't jump out. And on that half-mile slope, they'll hit a fast clip and then crash. (laughs) I got to hand it to you, Porter. Come on, you two, in the wagon. Thank you, Senor Squish. I'll get my hands on you some way. (laughs) The only thing anyone will ever find up here is one scrawny mule. Come on, Joe, Freddy, get behind this wagon and shove. Uh, yeah. Come on. Oh, Pat, what do we do? Oh, we can't budge these dirt ropes. Happy landing! Pat, we're picking up speed. There's no way we can stop this thing and we're heading for the precipice. There they go. Nothing will stop that wagon. You see, Freddy, it pays to use your head. Now we'll board the plane with the aliens, and no one will ever know what happened. Come on, Trigger Boy. Dale and Pat are in that runaway wagon. Porter, it's Roger. Well, how did he... We heard the bridge blow up. Well, my six-gun will stop him. Go, Trigger Boy. No, Pat, don't, don't shoot. This is perfect. What? Rogers can't stop that wagon the way it's rolling. And if he leaps on it, we're rid of him, too. For sure, this time. <laughs> Man, what thinking? 
Hey, Dale. Pat. I'll cut your ropes loose. You okay? Oh, we're shook up, but we're alive. Oh, Roy, another 50 feet. Don't we... think about it, Dale. Now, out and behind the wagon. Porter and Freddy, they're in cahoots to smuggle those aliens. They're armed, Roy, and they're dangerous. I know, but they're almost finished now. Their lead isn't even coming close to us. Now, watch this. What are you going to do, Roy? Well, I've got the big rifle. I'm going to knock those pop guns right out of their hands and clear off of the mesa. And then we'll go in and take them and wait for the sheriff's posse. Now, here it goes. <laughs> That was a real haul, Roy. Porter, his whole gang, the aliens shipped back home safely. I just don't know how to thank you. Don't even try, Sheriff. That racket's over in these parts, and that's the important thing. <laughs> and Dale and I are safe and sound in the Eureka Cafe. <laughs> that's the important thing to me. We sure couldn't have rounded them up without you two. Oh, Roy Rogers, we didn't have a thing to do with it. You sure did, Dale. If you hadn't gotten wise to Porter this morning, the gang would have had me up there alone. I'm pretty ashamed I let that Freddy pull a wool over my eyes. A load of banana squash. Pat, if you hadn't been so friendly, we never would even suspected Porter's smuggling operation. Next time you go hauling a load of banana squash around, just remember that banana peels are pretty slippery. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again mm -hmm. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal Roy likes best for strength and energy. Look for the picture of Roy and Trigger on the front of the package. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. You'll want to read the exciting, colorful life story of Roy Rogers, the king of the cowboys, in the current issue of Pick Magazine. And now, Crinkles, Post's new sugar-coated rice cereal, announces the fourth and final week's Name the Pony Contest winner. Congratulations, Daniel W. Carpenter of West Hartford, Connecticut. You've won a real Palomino pony picked by Roy Rogers. And congratulations, too, to all you thousands of other prize winners in Crinkles' exciting contest. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Nestor Piva, and Carlton Young. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Grape Nuts Flakes. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.